Hi guys, uh, Maxim with Art Medicine. I'd like to show you a stack of my drawings. There may be um, 20 um, pages here. I just uh, picked from a pile of uh, rough drawings, like the daily uh, sketching that I do on a regular basis this is a uh, sketchbook content this is a loose graphite pencil uh, drawing and let's uh, let's have a look at all of these drawings and let's uh, let's see what let's see what i have to say about this i would like to introduce you to my practice Mm, I would say that mm, this is a really fundamental practice for me to sketch and to draw on nearly daily basis. Uh, fundamental, it means to me that it's, it's a kind of a foundation of all of the other things that are built on top of mm, the, the foundation. So this is... Uh, to be able to draw with the line and shade and hatching uh, allows for me to be proficient um, in doing this task. It is a skill. I got started uh, with this skill set when I was uh, fairly young, in my early teens, I went to art school where we needed to um, apply to it, uh, go through exams, and there was competition for it. So the environment of learning was quite rigorous. Um, what was that rigor? It was, um, I was born in Russia and uh, the school there for art was more like a, like a technical school where we would learn definite uh, skills uh, so that later uh, we, you know, I as an artist, I could be really versatile in every aspect of uh, Mm -hmm. two-dimensional drawing painting so you, you know I specialize in drawing and painting all my life um, uh, and during this uh, learning process I was given knowledge and uh, methods of how to make um, this work for myself uh, so a really good way of learning this kind of skill set that i have is to create quantity a lot of attempts um, volumes literally volumes of drawings and attempts uh, sketchbook after sketchbook page after page and uh, naturally I would not be so effective or proficient or fluent at doing uh, performing this task in the beginning and then I could notice how uh, that every 10 pages every 100 pages every thousand pages would drastically increase my ability um, and what is this ability uh, this is i don't think this is really that re yes maybe like yeah, i want to say that this is not all reliant on my gift or talent oh you know maxim you must be a genius or uh, you must be talented uh, because you draw like this 
but I cannot testify to that because I draw like this. I should know. I've been there that whole lifespan. I draw like this because I keep drawing regularly and because I produce volumes and like the, you know, the byproduct of my learning are these drawings. So, you know, learning how to use line, learning how to use shadow, light, mid-tone, different types of um, shading methods, flat or point, mm, what kind of, uh, you know, it's a really flexible medium, uh, graphite, ancient and you know, really effective and really flexible medium. And uh, mm, what am I learning here? I am learning to very swiftly, very quickly, a reflect what my idea is visually so I have a, a way of showing myself what I would like to draw or I have a way of looking at a subject understanding its form and organizing it as a picture on a white page or on any color page. Sketching, learning through repetition. Uh, acquiring personal approach to you know it's really organic my hands my body is uh, holding a pencil and i'm producing these uh, uh, drawings so i develop my own unique stylistic um, look to it and um, it 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 comes as a, a a development is quite organic natural so like uh, in 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 one or two and three four years my range of ability is, is drastically increased and I'm able to see results from myself that are mm, consistent, organized in such way that I'm able to even apply style to a lot of these things. Like uh, I, could, I could make, you know, more smooth drawing or more rough drawing or mm, like a... I could uh, stylize in a, in a different way. I can use dark and light in a creative way to draw an object. Uh, like uh, we're looking at these drawings and there are faces or figures in them, but are they really faces and figures? You know, this is all put together through the use of these like just uh, in invented shapes like that's a shape of dark that's not an eye that's just drawn information in itself it is uh, like an abstract thing but uh, overall it gets organized so this is cohesive process and it is learned acquired skill set uh there mm, so i'm I'm excited to bring you in and let you see the, uh, you know, like the, the, the foundation that, that I have. I am excited that I will be able to share with you the basic methods, basic ways of producing this kind of result. I will be talking and showing and demoing around how to do this. What goes into the making of uh, mastering a skill set of drawing?
well let's uh, let's begin drawing I'm going to start drawing and um, sketching and uh, I my attitude is to warm up relax and get into the, the simplest of a portion of the task of the playing you know this is a piece of paper this is a pencil uh, I love uh, holding a drawing tool in my hand and I, I surely I'm it's possible for me to enjoy drawing today so warm up warm up exercise I'm drawing I'm gonna uh, I showed you a bunch of a bunch of drawings of figure and faces so this is something of a preference for me uh, I do enjoy drawing human representations like faces figures And I begin by really lightly uh, marking the overall area of where, let's say, the head is. The neck and the area where the shoulders would be. And then I would, I would go back into the drawing and sketch a little darker and give progressively more and more definition to to my drawing to the image um, this is a graphite pencil drawing Just a, a regular HB pencil. It is possible to um, calculate just by looking at the subject. It's possible to calculate where uh, the features such as eyes, nose, and mouth, or hair will land. If I think that the eyes are, how far are the eyes from the top of the shape, of the overall shape, and towards the bottom, like they, they're like really close to the middle area of the drawing of the face. And I can mark that. And then the nose is, let's say, would fit halfway through that. It is really possible to, just by looking and carefully, uh, and carefully thinking, understanding like the proportion of where something is located. And then uh, my method is I learned this skill set and the method is to not to take anything too far into finalizing by itself but to uh, keep moving through the moving along throughout the picture little by little establishing all of the features 
to move along. Not to finish one thing and get stuck in an area wanting to perfect it right away and wanting to see a really good result from me. I want to relax out of that and uh, achieve overall progress instead, which makes it also logical because it balances elements evenly over a period of a few minutes that I'm going to be making this drawing. And then I get a chance to, it's like a, a little scale if I imagine putting one weight on one side and then the other side being outweighed and dropping down. That's uh, That would be not evenly balanced weight. So the weight of light and dark, the weight of completion, the balance that holds the drawing together is when I'm placing some weight here and then I move and place similar amount of energy elsewhere And that would help me to distribute my efforts evenly and consistently throughout my attempt at drawing. I am warming up. I am thinking about line. I am thinking about shading. I am uh, looking at a picture off to the side for reference, but uh, the reference could be important, but this is not to be photographic reference. This is to be a general idea of a human impression. This is an exercise of a warm up. A warm up. I am warming up to drawing. I'm warming up to thinking about shadow and light. I'm not concerned with likeness. This is not a, a portrait commission. No one has to see what I'm drawing. I am peaceful and calm here in my studio, in my paint sta corner, at my paint or art station. And I am just playing with my favorite tools and toys. That would be art supplies. And making art. Purely therapeutic, start out with the, the least ambition. Mm, taking pressure off myself, it's a strategy, it's a, it's a type of... Uh, I am a lot more productive when, I do not, when I'm not stressed or rushed. Or preoccupied with um, 
less less productive patterns of thinking like I could be coming from a stressful situation arguing with a loved one or worrying about getting sick and then if I can get myself uh, sup support myself in a kind of conscious way I'm like okay I am expecting that I will need some some support from myself to calm down I am asking myself to relax give way to natural progression of events slow progression my aim is to warm up and get into my art And uh, go next, um, produce a volume, produce a volume of drawings, spend uh, an hour or, or more just uh, being occupied with drawing. I... I'm looking at my favorite subjects to draw to start with because it will likely, I will likely be successful in being calm or focused and relaxed, interested enough to sustain my my exercise and so i i just uh, i have the experience I have the understanding of what I'm doing. I quickly map out overall largest shapes. And then I use um, a lighter line that my pencil is capable of making. And, and I feel into the, the process. I create a, a, a little bit of drawing, a little bit of dark and then I move as I'm looking at the subject of my drawing I move along I trace what my eyes are seeing coordinated to my hand and progressively with a small um, pace like sh slow pace movements without um, an ambition to uh, produce astounding uh, genius uh, art 
full results i am just um, scaling that down a lot and i am uh, just with myself exploring making lines uh, shapes darker and lighter areas i am figuring out how far would this object be from this object and as i am figuring that out by making a, an assessment of what i'm seeing i am following up with reinforcing this information with let's say darker shadow and there is continuity to my process I'm just quickly um, blocking a lot of um, mid-tone or dark into this area where the hair is and I'm also angling my pencil to follow the angle of the form you know this like let's say that's hair it's not really hair it's just an area of dark that I'm creating with pencil but that that hair is kind of going flowing around the head and dropping downwards this way and then let's say I've done a little bit of work here and here and now I want to go back and uh, balance other areas too because I have some places that are further developed further ahead than other areas so I would like to and get a balance by attending to areas that didn't get enough attention and how do I know if if that's enough attention or not well that's um that's strictly a, a personal standpoint and that's why art is a really good activity for me because I like to determine like I like to make a call on <laughs> whether it's finished or not because or whether something is finished or not because I like being able to choose the harmonious balance in my own project so uh, knowing myself and um, being interested in drawing I would be likely I am likely to keep working long enough to get to a point where I begin to like what I'm seeing and I also know that I'm just warming up for for um, yeah, finishing this uh, big painting later on and I need to really uh, like I want as much focus as 
as I can get from myself. I want to get dig in. I want to be in there painting to, because uh, it, it is also a job. It is. I want to be tuned in. I'm tuning myself up right now by doing a sketching. Observing, putting together an image with my hands, holding a pencil. This is a quick sketch. An oval, an organic oval shape that's like kind of an egg shape, it's pointier at the bottom. That's a, that's a general shape of a human head. It's uh, simplified and stylized into an oval, the human head. And then everything else is details and they exist within the major shape some uh, guidelines like drawing this type of line is really useful to determine where the middle of the shape is so that I can start placing information within a proximity that is likely to be like you know a bit symmetrical or a bit proportionate it's like a, a trick I wouldn't finish anything like eyes nose mouth before I am sure to make a call that they are placed well, and what that means is that I I can evaluate the distance between these features and I can agree with myself that I am getting the placement of features of the face in the area that seems agreeable to me. I am the first person to evaluate and to view my drawing. I would like to have a clear and balanced idea of what I am making sooner than later. And once I have uh, these balances, like, you know, things are fitting believably, like I can see where my eyes, uh, the picture's eyes are going to be fitting. Uh, I can see that I can still really adjust a lot. I can move the top of the head or the hair up a lot if I want to. I, I can shape this area. Further and create a chin, a notion that there is a, a chin. I can create a notion that there is a, a cheek and a cheekbone. And then I can transfer that notion over to the, um, the other side of the drawing, like I continue building up. Uh, is it important to have a, a drawing to be really proportionate and realistic? Um, it depends on your idea what you want to have in your artwork, but um, it doesn't hurt to learn 
a lot of um, methods in how <laughs> how to make anything possible. Uh, the thing is that I find that I am classically trained. I I understand the methods behind proportion, linear drawing, shading, methods of working from general bigger shapes towards finer details. There's so many things there and and what I am benefiting from often is knowing all that is I can I understand what I'm doing I can put it together and then I can put it together any way I want to so I can uh, yeah there, there are some accidents like really nice happy accidents where I'm going to draw something and it's gonna look really nice and I'm gonna like it but my success rate of these happy accidents drastically increases when I have many, many skill-based uh, behaviors at my disposal. I know that if I'm placing a shadow here and if I'm placing a shadow here, that accident or not, there is gotta be more shadow placed in other areas to produce continuous sense of form. And for me often I draw and even if I'm looking at someone or if I'm looking at a picture or if I'm drawing from imagination, I often draw people that look like people I know. I don't know why that happens. It's just funny, I think. And just sketch, mess things up, get a, get a going, get into the zone, into the process. Have fun creating. I switch to a woodless pencil and this is a 6B you know a good a good a good kind of tool and I'm just drawing a bunch of quick sketches of faces I let's say if I look at a photo uh, or a live person it doesn't matter if I'm looking at my reference I am spotting at what angle the major shapes are positioned. Let's say a skull, human head is simplified into an oval with a pointy end at the bottom. That's the, ch the chin, it's pointier than the top of the head. And then there's a neck on which the head is sitting. So I get the angle the diagonal on which the main shape is located and then I get uh, and then I can uh, cut into it uh, starting to map out possible uh, location for major details or features of the face such as mass of hair without the individual strands like uh, I don't want to get caught in any detail right now I just want uh, locations, major, major areas, major locations, the entirety. Uh, where would the eyes be? 
I would like to, I mapped out um, a little line here, a little line here, a little line here to zo kind of zoom zero in on on um, possible locations. And then I went right back and started chiseling out or cutting the shapes out of um, white paper. And now I'm getting with the use of light and dark in this case i'm using line and a bit of a shading to go along with that oftentimes right away setting everything up i am um, uh, yes observation is really good to to pay attention to so after after many years, after a while, even s s less than many years, I develop keen observation when it comes to understanding the form of what I am looking at. Is this an oval? Is this a square? Is this a circle? And like what organic, amazing or organic shapes are visible within what I'm looking at. So yeah. And then I just keep um, navigating across the board, like setting things up, hopefully lighter than I, you know, go lighter, I go lighter. Uh, before I go darker because I reserve room for a change in moving things around adjusting and even let's say I I could I could extend out of that area I can make the forehead a bit taller a bit bigger if I want to so there is lots and lots of room for correcting and the eraser is not really necessary I found uh, throughout my experience of being a, you know, I don't like calling myself an artist. I'm just a person drawing. But <laughs> it's, it seems like when I give myself um, a kind of a label, I, it, it looks like the label is bigger than my humble life. As a human, I, you know, I'm, I'm no huge artist or anything. And, and if I want to call myself that, I'm usually trying to advertise or sell something to someone. Like, I know what I'm talking about. But um, and besides the point, in my experience as a human who draws and paints as an artist, I noticed that inhibiting factors for me were um, insecure thinking and wanting to attain really good results really quickly and not giving a time to my being, to myself to absorb, digest and integrate my skill set my mastery enough to to be to expect that from myself so you know now in my 40s i after many years went by and and i've been with myself for a long time or uh, for the time that i've been with myself all that's my time and <laughs> For me, that's the longest time because that's my limit of knowing, of, of getting time perception. It's like, you know, I lived long, as long as I had, and that's the longest I know intimately. And I can't even imagine, I see this, some other person living longer than I, but I wouldn't know what that would be, feel like until I get there. So... I, you know, I, I like to I like to joke about what I think. I, I'm I'm a skeptic. I like skepticism, but a healthy version of it. 
And what does that mean? It's uh, have lots of open doors for uh, the, uh, the arrival of new information. I do not want to make a final call by saying, oh, I know what this is. Uh, no. I don't know. I know what this is to some degree. And I am looking forward to learning more. That's my inner attitude. And my skepticism is that. That, okay, well, you know, maybe there's going to be more on the plate that we didn't look at. And with sketching, today we are... We're just looking at my method, and that's many people's method. We're looking at how we can start mapping things out and having a result without needing to complete anything. We're just exploring drawing with a pencil. We're taking time into to get and drawing out and they're all like five minute or less attempts sketches of of figure without completion without and this is just volume of produce a volume of attempts Next, angle for the entire form. This is a drawing of a head that I'm attempting. An angle is this, a diagonal of this type. And this is uh, over an overall shape of the head. And this is the neck. And this is the shape that represents overall area that's occupied by hair. And then and this is all done with light lines. And then a mapping, balancing to see like, okay, how far is the area where the eyes are going to be is. And like it's, you know, I'm seeing this far from the top a bit. So just a bit of a coordination, a, a bit of a, a, analyzing and plotting a nose mouth placement areas and then just to go back to previous um, bits and just uh, continue adding more information what's the more information in this case it's um, <clears throat> taking side of the head and understanding cutting into it and understanding that there's more information on along the contour there would be a cheekbone structure going in like that and then there would be you know another variation of an angle and a muscle and an area occupied by skin and then so just more information within a simpler attempt the preliminary attempt and cut back into it and set it up a bit more Spend time, slow down. It's possible to lay in a little bit of shading right away so that there is a sense of form, three-dimensional sense, immediately achieved. Knowing where the light source is, being aware of the light source, the light is coming from here. 
so shadow is on the opposite side of it and this is a head that's on a slight angle so I'm seeing nostrils and uh, a type of triangular or trapezoid shape here representing the cluster of forms that you know the nose the nostrils the all of these small features that are still too early to decide because i i got other features that are even bigger than these nostrils they're still not there let's let's try to place that in uh, look at uh, i'm looking at uh, shapes of dark and light or light and dark more than i'm looking at um trying to stereotypically draw out the eye or the eyebrow you know it's uh, so the strategy taken is it's um it's uh, a unique and um um cohesive uh, like a s logical visual strategy to take during creating of an artwork i am mastering an image via adjusting light and dark via using linear or shaded areas um, so i am more efficient if i do not try to represent the subject like it's better not to draw the eye it's better to draw the shadow and light areas that i'm seeing i'll get a lot more done that way and the shadow and light areas are a lot more abstract components than the thinking behind of the drawing of the eye so i want to be able to draw a face then start thinking about abstract light and dark shapes that make make that face that it's made up of um much not to complete anything remember just um start light there is already a placement area that trust that that i found trust myself that i found the area correct it um take another better look if i need to um go a bit lighter to begin with mm to build up the light and dark consistently throughout the entire drawing without favoring one, any particular area this will give me an overall balance of light and dark so everything is moving along at the same time i am placing information in many different areas without completing any one of these areas a look at how nice it is to place a lot of of this dark right here immediately now i have like a more of a three dimensional feel to to my drawing and if i was not um, thinking about consistently building of all of the shadow let's say then i might have forgotten this area and i might have gotten caught in details and then i would have um, i wouldn't have seen the the 3d form like i might need to do a lot less to get a an expressive sketch out if i look after all these various parts of it instead of so you know i i could do much less work and get a lot more done if i am uh, distributing my efforts and my energy consistently and uh, overall and throughout the artwork 
Uh, no, no eraser is necessary for this. No, uh, no. Um, uh, this will be a rough, rough material to demonstrate to you guys and to students. I usually go into a workshop or a class environment. I would say. A lead by example you know I, I don't say it I lead by example by okay so here is my pile of drawings from just this week and uh, then th I got something to talk about right away I get uh, the attention and um, you know could be even uh, admiration or trust of the audience because I am producing results I am investing in my in a in a skill set that I have I uh, I follow up all the time keep going take your time get into um, a dialogue with myself around uh, my creative practice at this point you know what I'm doing and uh, you guys are <clears throat> you guys are doing this kind of uh, practice on already it is really easy to uh, to preach to the conformed uh, crowd it's um, and also i think that you know for for those who are starting or for didn't even start yet but want to just uh, get more creative and um, adopt uh, a practice in their life and that is wonderful, creative, peaceful, um, therapeutic, it's really valuable. And you know what is really happening in front of you. Not much. And yet, recently I, because I know kind of where things are going to be, and because I have all these uh, tricks and methods um, established within myself, I can um, pretty much uh, follow um, a random just by feel if I want to draw here I will draw here and if I wanted to draw here I would draw here there's no um, order to this anymore for me because I am fluent to a certain level I am, um, you see, I have a, an accent when I speak in English. And I have an accent when I draw in pencil. But my level of fluency is robust enough to sustain, sustain a flow uninterrupted and uh, somewhat cohesive flow oftentimes I I really like the minimal amount of information that uh, says a lot like here's a, I drew a line in a certain way with a bit of shading beside that and and i and that's it that's already speaking volumes of 
Is it, <laughs> Maxi? Yeah, sure. But what I'm trying to say is, less is more oftentimes. So, like, going kind of slow-ish. And not overkilling with the effort. Gets up. Gets, gets more across. Or at least that's what I think. So sketching is a lively, um, immediate, and um, unfinished uh, process. It is, you know, just like the scratching of the paper by graphite to produce a basic image. And uh, the function of it is to warm up, uh, learn about the subjects that I'm portraying, get insight on what the picture is. This is, it's really about um, learning a lot really quickly. And um, the, the results from that are seen over time. Uh, try populating your sketchbook or just getting a bunch of paper drawn up for yourself. So like a, a calming therapeutic practice of hanging out with yourself and doing a bit of art for fun. And see and sustain that over a few days doesn't have to be a lot and you will surely see how drastically how quickly you will improve you I acquire confidence in holding a pencil and making an image and the hard to even the muscles within your palm of your hand will attribute to that will become stronger and you will have more dexterity and fine motor skills um, that's good for something <clears throat> let's try let's try i warmed up a bit uh, and um uh, let's go like one minute or less um for drawing and just the uh, quick gestures of human head face female uh, impressions of um, women maybe mainly linear the least amount of effort
it's been going over sketching some faces they were mainly female faces but um it was really about uh, uh arriving and showing up for some playtime draw sketch uh get out of uh, stress um look at uh, using a line look at uh, what would be interesting for you to draw and begin and uh, be inspired and have lots of patience and lots of interest towards the self and personal process thanks